This episode is sponsored by Disney Dreamlight Valley. Explore a world filled with the magic of Disney as you build your neighborhood alongside Disney and Pixar heroes and villains. I really like how calming this game is, especially cooking. Cooking in this game can be quite relaxing as you can find ingredients, discover new recipes, and also cook and hand over dishes to a lot of the characters in the game. It's something that I find myself doing quite often, especially with a really nice and calm soundtrack in the background, which I particularly love. To try it for yourself, head to the link in the description. だから、Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin. Today I'll be making your briar stew from one of my personal favorites and one of this year's most popular anime, Spy Family. Ah, I must have left one of my weapons on the table. You know, to a trained assassin, knife movement is child's play. It should feel like the extension of one's own arm. Manipulation and maneuvering of this weapon is second nature to- Oh god, don't ever do that in front of kids, y'all. I'm just gonna leave this over here while I start to cook. This should be easier, right? This stew seems to be yours take on a minestrone, which she makes with a lot of different items she's found at the grocery store. I think I'll use my primary weapon for this. One of the most important things about being an assassin is speed. We're trained to use precision and mercy, making sure to strike quickly so the target does not feel any pain. This will also allow cleaner and smoother cuts, which makes cleanup a lot easier. Ah yes, I forgot to cut this head of romaine lettuce. Uh, uh, looks like I owe Andrew a new cutting board. No one saw that. In a large saucepan over medium heat, I'm adding in the mangled skins of carrots and potatoes, followed by a couple of clean tomato slices, one bisected red apple, the arms and legs of one large jalapeno, an obliterated chunk of Swiss cheese, a cut up torso of romaine lettuce, a heaping tablespoon of tomato paste. Make sure to cover the ingredients with enough water so that all of them drown. I will give this stew about 15 minutes on the heat in the water. That should be sufficient for all the flavor to die. It has now been 15 minutes and things are smelling quite deadly. Oh god, it smells so bad. I'm gonna serve up a couple of ladlefuls of this soup and attempt to plate it in such a way that it does not look suspicious whatsoever. There is a quite unpleasant aroma of melted chocolate and tomato in the air. Ah, excuse me, dear sir, would you like to try some free stew? I promise, it's my first time making it. The unsuspecting target seems to be going for it. Oh. Task failed successfully. あれあったかくて好きだったな。あ、目玉焼きが乗ってるやつ。よし、それを作ってみましょう。多分ベースは簡単なナンプシチューだと思う。おお、煮立ったら火を止めて。多分パプリカパウダーを入れるはず。はい。焦げつかないよう気をつけて。塩コショウの分量を間違えないように。わかりました。召し上がれ。美味し
I'm going to unsheathe my secondary weapon, a vegetable peeler, and for the first time in this job, actually use it for the purpose it was designed for, peeling two Yukon gold potatoes and two large carrots. Once the vegetables had been separated from their skins, I now return to my primary weapon to finish the job, using a rolling cut technique to get nice chunks that look like jewels. One of the signature ingredients that seems to be characteristic of goulash is paprika. I'm throwing in one third of a cup of sweet paprika and three teaspoons of hot paprika. Once the onions and paprika have melted into a delicious red paste, I must now resort to my heavy weapon, a mortar and pestle to crush the heads of a tablespoon of caraway seeds. This weapon has armor piercing capabilities, useful for enemies with tough shells to crack, like spices or peppercorns. Into the pot they go, along with one tablespoon of dried margarine, and three tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm cooking this on low heat for about a minute, just so that the rawness of the tomato paste cooks out. This is followed by eight cups of beef stock. Both the beef stocks and the beef shank came from a cow I encountered on a previous mission. I was walking down the street one day when a cow suddenly charged wildly at me, but I neutralized it by hitting its pressure points and tossing it into the air. I'm letting the stew simmer for approximately 3 hours on low heat, almost fully covered, just so that my old opponent is nice and tender. After 3 hours, I'm now adding in the potatoes and the carrots. If we added the vegetables too early in the process, it would have broken them down completely and made the stew a little bit too sludgy. The vegetables cook for approximately 30 minutes. Now for the fun stuff. I'm going to add in something usually not found in goulash. Little hot dogs, cut into octopus shapes. This non-traditional touch is definitely something that yours mother did. And it's a great way to use up leftover hot dogs. Two tablespoons of sour cream are also added, as that seems to be a secret ingredient to her mother's stew. But we're not done quite yet. The final touch on yours stew is a beautiful sunny side up egg. So in a small pan with just a little touch of butter, we fry an egg. I like to cover mine and turn off the heat when it's about 70% done, just so that the top barely cooks through. Now that all of our ingredients are ready, it's time to serve. Something like this has to be served in a big bowl, with huge spoonfuls of it. Making sure our little hot dog friends are clearly visible, and finally topped off with the fried egg. And I present to you, your Briar Stew from Spy Family. A comforting dish that her mother made for her and her brother growing up, which now she makes for her family. Spy Family. Yeah. Let's give this a taste, hopefully it does not take me out. I really like this. My mom never really made me anything like this, but I can definitely feel how comforting this is. The warm spices, the simple vegetables, the way that the beef is soft and tender along with that strong taste of paprika is so good. I will have to say, I love the hot dog and the egg. That's what separates a traditional goulash from something that your mom makes for you. And if I have a family one day, I'm definitely putting hot dogs in my food. Thanks again to Disney Dreamlight Valley for sponsoring this episode. Disney Dreamlight Valley is a life sim adventure game where you can build your own home, neighborhood, avatar, and more. One of my favorite parts about this game is cooking. You can also make a lot of money by selling those dishes, and I particularly love the market and economy aspect of games like this. I've really enjoyed playing it, and I think you should check it out. Head to the link in the description to try it for yourself.